At 730 square miles, Lake Okeechobee is the largest freshwater lake in the state of Florida and the second largest in the U.S. Lake Okeechobee originally served as a shallow freshwater reservoir for the waters that flowed in from the Kissimmee Basin. Historically, when the lake reached its capacity, it overflowed its low natural banks and streamed into the Everglades. Over the years, Lake Okeechobee and the Everglades combined to create a pristine natural ecosystem hosting thousands of trees, plants, birds, fish and wildlife species. Today, Lake Okeechobee provides fresh water to its surrounding communities and millions of residents along the Lower East Coast. It also provides irrigation for the state's 1.5 billion dollar agricultural industry. However, Lake Okeechobee is perhaps best known for its abundant waters and natural beauty that attract millions of leisure, sports and nature enthusiasts each year. Today, Lake Okeechobee is important to both recreation and navigation. The 154-mile Lake Okeechobee waterway runs through and around it and is used for recreation and commercial navigation, including tugboats, barges, and commercial fishing vessels. Settlers arriving at the land along Lake Okeechobee's southern banks in the late 1800s and early 1900s found the rich soil and favorable year-round climate to be ideal for growing sugarcane, winter crops, citrus and rice. In an effort to control frequent flooding from the lake, local residents built up the lake's low banks, but they were easily overtopped during the rainy season. Unfortunately, hurricanes in 1926 and 1928 brought torrential rain and fierce winds that whipped the lake's waters over its muck banks. The resulting floods claimed lives and devastated property. To prevent these disasters from reoccurring, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers drafted a new long-term plan that called for the construction of floodway channels, control gates, and major levees along Lake Okeechobee's shores. In 1937, the Corps completed construction of levees from Port Mayaka to Moore Haven and from the Kissimmee River to Nubbin Slough. The new levee system successfully protected people and property, and it wasn't until the hurricanes of 1947 and 1948 that Lake Okeechobee again overflowed its banks. Although the levee prevented the loss of lives, flooding was extensive and losses to livestock and agriculture were enormous. The level of destruction was so severe that the people of Florida asked the U.S. government to approve a larger flood protection project. The following year, the Corps was authorized to construct levees that would completely encircle the lake and at heights that would provide maximum protection during severe hurricanes. In 1960, Congress named these enhanced levees the Herbert Hoover Dyke. The Herbert Hoover Dyke, now more than 70 years old, was originally built by piling up earthen materials located on site, including sand, shells, rocks, gravel and muck. While the dyke does an adequate job of holding back water and its tall height makes overtopping unlikely, it is susceptible to varying degrees of seepage, where water trickles through the earthen structure. This is more likely to occur when water levels in the lake are high and the pressure increases from the weight of the water against the dike walls. A slight amount of seepage is acceptable until it begins to carry away the underlying soil. This type of erosion, or piping, can move considerable amounts of soil, resulting in significant leaks. Too many instances of piping, or very large pipes, can weaken the levee and cause disastrous breaches. This is why the Corps continuously monitors the Herbert Hoover Dyke and Lake Okeechobee. Prior to a tropical storm, the dike is inspected and outlets are closed until after the storm. Once weather conditions permit, the dike is reinspected. 
sandbags, stone, rock and other material that can be used to make repairs are stored year-round in different areas around the lake. These materials are used to strengthen areas that may have been eroded by the force of hurricane-driven winds. The Corps manages water levels in Lake Okeechobee according to a regulation schedule that calls for lower levels at the beginning of the wet season and higher levels afterward. This cyclical schedule is based upon historical data and enables Lake Okeechobee to provide drinking water and water to the natural system during the dry season, thereby creating the capacity to collect the rain that falls in the wet season. Reliable, responsible, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers 